Hello students, this is Mr. Downing. Today we're going to talk about some basic word problems. Uh, first we're going to talk about a strategy. Now if you've been doing word problems before, you've probably done something similar to this, but let's go ahead and enumerate it and really just talk about out loud what that strategy is. So you probably have a copy of this paper. So our first step on any problem is we're going to write down the numbers. What that means is as we read through the problem, anytime we see any number, any numerals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we're going to write those down. We're going to include the numbers with it. Um, so we're going to include the measurements with it. So what that means is I have a sample problem here. So our problem is, if an Olympic runner does a sprint over a distance of 100 meters and reaches the finish line in a time of 10 seconds, what was the runner's speed? Now, this is a really easy step. So all I'm going to do is I see two numbers, 100 meters, 10 seconds. When I say units, this is what I'm talking about, 100 meters, 10 seconds. So I'm just going to write those down. Some of you might be thinking that a shortcut would be just to underline them. You will be better served by writing them down. Um, I'll talk about that why in a minute. Our step two, step one was the easiest step. Step two is the most difficult. In step two, we're identifying the numbers. Identify what type of measurement each one is and write it down so each measurement is labeled. Now, this might be the most difficult step, but it is multiple choice. Meaning, 100 meters defines something. It's a type of measurement. It's measuring something. All of our options are on this formula chart. One of these words is what that measurement is. And you can just read right down through for all your options. It could be a density, a mass, a volume, heat, mass, change in temperature, specific heat, speed, distance, time, accelerate. It's one of these. You can see it's a long list, but one of these is what it is. Now, there are two ways to figure this out. Meters is our first clue. That's the unit. It will never lie to you. Meters always measures the same thing. So if you have that memorized, you're good. The units are always there. Now, what is sometimes there is sometimes there is a clue, a keyword. In this case, it says a distance of 100 meters. It tells us straight out that 100 meters is a distance. Now, we look at 10 seconds. I think most of us recognize that seconds is the units that measure time. Now, whenever I said the units will never lie to you, this is a good example. We can't use seconds to measure anything but time. We can't say how many seconds tall we are. We can't say how many seconds fast we're going. We can't say how many seconds strong something is. We can only say time in seconds. So I know that 10 seconds is a time, but it also says a time of 10 seconds. It says it right there in the problem. So that's step one and two. We've identified it. Step three. Step three asks me, what do they want? Sometimes step three is extremely easy. Sometimes it's trickier. So when we look at the problem, what was the runner speed? That's pretty straightforward. They want to know the speed. Sometimes the last couple are different. They might ask how fast was the runner going? Well, then we'd have to look how fast. That's a keyword for speed. This time they're straight out. Just like step two, step three, what are they looking for? It's multiple choice. It's one of these. They're looking for something on the formula chart. So step three, the question is speed. Step four, pick out a formula. Sometimes this is really easy, sometimes this can be challenging, but here's the trick. This one, this is a really easy question, I know that. We're practicing the logic here. So we know that the formula has to have speed in it, because that's what I'm looking for. If my formula doesn't have what I'm looking for in it, I'll never find it. Like, I can't use the density equals mass over volume formula and try to find speed, because it's not there. Now, there are several formulas that have speed in it. We have to narrow it down to the one we want. In this case, it has to have speed, then the rest of the formula has to have some combination of these other things. So speed, distance, time. This is the only one that has speed and is filled out with distance and time. So this is my equation. So step four speed equals 
distance over time. If you want to use some abbreviations, you can. Just be careful that you're not um, getting sloppy handwriting and making T's with like plus signs or anything like that. Because these first four steps are all organization. You leave a notice. Look how I wrote these things down. Distance, time, and speed. I put them all in a column so that they're all in a row. I can glance and see what it is. I have 100 meters, 10 seconds, right next to each other. This is the reason I don't want to just underline the numbers. I don't want to just point it at the formula chart. I actually want to rewrite it because look, at a glance, everything I need to know is right there. I no longer have to, in my mind, try to remember this and remember that and look what I'm doing and figure it out and use half my mind remembering things and half of it doing problem solving. Let the paper remember. It's all here. Now, this is a question, was a simplified one, so there is no step five. Step five, would be rearrange the formula. That means do some algebra, manipulate it, um, so that what I'm looking for is by itself. In this case I'm, case, I'm looking for speed, and the speed is by itself, so there's nothing required here in step five. If I was looking, say the problem gave me a speed and gave me a time, and wanted me to figure out the distance, there'd be some algebra needed to get the distance by itself and move the time to the other side. In this problem, this is a simplified one, it does not. Step six, if we've done the other steps, step six is really easy, plug in the numbers. So that means I take this formula and I write it down again, except whenever I write it this time, if I know any of these numbers, I put the real number in. So speed, and there, look, there's not even thinking. All I have to do is just glance over here and look at this little speed. Nope, don't know what that is. So speed equals distance. Oh, my distance, that's 100. Time equals time, oh, that's 10. 100 divided by 10. Now, I do want you to write this stuff down. I think you'll find it helpful, because it could be a really easy mistake to put this fraction upside down, to do 10 divided by 100. But we're going to write down our work and then pick up the calculator. That's going to avoid more of those errors. Yes, we could probably get this problem right if we just read it and looked at it and go, oh, we divide, pick up our calculator, punch it in, and get it. This is a simple problem but we want to stress the logic behind it. That's what we're building. And we're going to write this down and then pick up our calculator. Um, in this case, it's a simple one. Hopefully you don't need a calculator. I hope everyone recognizes that 100 divided by 10 is 10. And now because this is meters and not seconds, it's 10 meters divided by seconds. This is my answer. Okay, notice the organization columns and a list. I have my formula and then I have the numbers plugged in right underneath. It's nice and clean, doesn't leave me a lot of room for mistakes.